What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Of course, we've all been talking about the whole Cat Williams, Kevin Hart, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Earthquake, Michael Blackson, Tiffany Haddish controversy. We've all been discussing that. However, Something that was discussed was this whole Diddy allegation uh, that's been very popular, right? And I'm going to weigh in on that on a separate video. But simply, he talked about the same thing with Harvey Weinstein, offered him some money to do some things to him. He's now saying that Diddy offered him some money. And he's basically saying that he hasn't blown up in Hollywood or mainstream because he wasn't willing to do sexual favors. All right. Now, is he's definitely talented. He's definitely funny as hell, right? But he's not the only person to say this. Popular comedian Gary Owen has responded to what Cat Williams has said. And what he's going to admit to will shock you. Do you like Cat or not? He's not going to talk behind your back. However he feels about you, that's how he feels about you. Now, he did say one thing. Um, he talked about Ricky Smiley, and he talked about when Ricky Smiley went on Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp's podcast, which is a great podcast, especially for, I know I'm a white guy, but for my demographics, and I'll get into that in a minute, what Kat said about me, but for my demographics, you know, Club Shay Shay, I'd rather go on Club Shay Shay than Joe Rogan. Um, even though, okay, I, I got to get into all, I got to unpack this, this, this podcast because Kat made a comment where he said, uh, why you think Gary Owen, who's a white guy has been doing stand up for 25 years, hasn't crossed over. And when he said it, I was like, wait a minute, was that a good thing or bad thing? And I literally had to go to Twitter and start asking people, was I catching strays or what was that? And they was like, no, they were saying you haven't sold your soul. That's why you haven't crossed over. You've been consistently you, and that's why you haven't, quote, unquote, crossed over. So I was like, oh, okay, that made sense. Now, I'm not going to get into it, but I've been uh, – I, I was in an awkward situation one time where I can't say for 100% this person was trying to make me do something, casting couch type deal, but it felt like it. And I was like, is this – is this, is this that point where I've always heard, would you suck a dick for a million dollars? And I was thinking to myself when I was in this office going, in this room going, well, this is the, I'm, I'm about to answer this question. And the answer was no, I wouldn't. So <laughs> now I, 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 listen, I can't say for a hundred percent. That's where the, it was going, but it felt like it. It felt like it. You got to be in the room to feel it. And I was like, oh, this dude is really coming on to me like this is happening in real life it, and the, the 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 dude did it and he'll always remain nameless uh he i think he was feeling me out like is this this dude and this was years ago i was young in the game but i, I was just like wait a minute is this happening right now i was like oh my god and then i was like i i you know i made sure i made it very clear i like women i'm not going that route uh blah, blah, blah. so i'm not gonna get into it but I, I was wondering. I was like, "Ooh, is this gonna? Is this? Is this happening to me right now in real life?" So I think Cat was saying I haven't sold my soul, and that's why I haven't crossed over. So you heard that, right? I now want you to listen to what Corey Holcomb has said. He said this many times. He said this. He lives in Hollywood. He is friends with some of these guys. I want you to hear what Corey Holcomb has to say, and then we'll come back. I used to talk about gay Hollywood. And so many people would say to me, Corey think everybody gay. <laughs> Listen to what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. I don't, I can't do nothing about the lifestyle of men who choose that. But I do want to give you a little information. All you guys who thinking of coming out of here, thinking you gonna make it, 
your asshole must be sacrificed. Mm. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get it, homie. If you ain't coming out of here to ride cowboy style at these parties. <laughs> the Illuminati, that shit, they approached me. Hey, man, these motherfuckers think it's a joke. They approached Ray, me. You, you ain't scared to talk about it, huh? Yeah, they approached me, but I was lucky they had the wrong motherfucker because when the Illuminati approached me, they was like, Sinbad. I was like, nah, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Got the wrong nigga. I ain't sitting back. <laughs> I have been on television shows and been so scared. Because, I, th- I like I've said this, when I did Black Jesus, I was like, oh, shit, this going to be my last day because I saw the scene with the dress in it. Yeah. I am so lucky that I had a director on the show who was like, yeah, Corey, no, you ain't got to just put this thing. He had me put on, like, uh, it's the women of the desert. What is it called? A burqa they wear? Yeah, like the, um... Yeah. So they told me I could just put on the um, suit the men wear out there. I forgot the name of that. Very similar. It's just like a straight I was ball. like, okay, I'll put on the pants, nigga. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it didn't turn into nothing, nothing for real. But I know what it was. Yeah. I was like, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. The nigga in a dress episode. Yeah. Homie, I'm... At a stage in life where I'm past that wanting that money like that. I mean, that money like that is good. It makes you not be accountable for nothing in a lot of situations. That's the good thing about money, because you're going to get tired of going to the mall and all that shit. That Mm -hmm. shit play out after a while. But I'm saying, when you got a lot of money, you can basically buy your way out of most situations. Mm -hmm. Unless them people want you directly, they wanted Michael Jackson. That's why they came at him and put that shit on him. Michael Jackson been Michael Jackson for years. Mm-hmm. But when they, when he said some shit in this song, all I really know is that they don't really care about us. They was like, oh, <laughs> we're going to make you pay for that, Michael. And they have been after him ever since. You know what I'm saying? Probably before that. But mm-hmm. I'm just saying, man, all this stuff you seeing, you ain't getting nothing but bits and pieces of the truth. These parties in Hollywood come with consequence and penetration. <laughs> and if you like to party and and bounce, you need to come to Hollywood. Why why be a, a backdoria in Cleveland when you can come to LA and you might get the right tickle back there? So guys, this is what I want to deal with. And a lot of times, we look up to a lot of the brothers and sisters that's in Hollywood. Um, we see those who are underpaid to Raji P. Henson. Then you see guys coming in that do things their own way. I would say a guy like 50 Cent. Um, you see brothers like Tariq Nasheed on the independent level, Corey Holcomb on the independent level. But then you hear, like when you see these guys that make it very, very big, you. You sit there now and you wonder like, okay, Gary Owen is saying this. And look, this is not just a black or white thing. This is an everybody thing. He says he felt that. And Gary Owen is, 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 is largely talented in my opinion. He is not mainstream. Do you see what I'm saying? And so what it's saying is, if you really want to be big in Hollywood, I'm starting really to believe and I've always heard this. But this got to be largely true for women and men. What did Gilbert Arena say just a few days ago? Let me play that clip and we're going to come back. 2003, 2004. Mm -hmm. I knew it was around that time. 2003, 2004. Went to the playoff series. And Holly Berry's walking by. And I'm like, oh, shit. Holly Berry, bro. Fine. And it was like like four, five white dudes sitting there. Um, now, Harvey Weinstein, he was one of them. And like, so I'm not in the front row. I'm in that, you know, I'm just like the front row. And then you got the little space. And then the, 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 the first row after that, like, so it's like the second row. And, and they were sitting there talking about, oh, now she acting like she don't know us. <laughs> 
She wasn't saying that when she needed that part. Every single one of them hit. I was like, no, not Holly. No, not them. Yuck. Damn. They got the berry. And I don't really know when people seen the Harvey Weinstein and all that and the, the Bill Cosby and the Peels and the how, how you think them ugly was getting hoes? <laughs> you think they was getting hoes off their looks? No! They gotta promise shit. Hey, yeah, I gotta get your part and this and this and this. I gotta, yeah, I get your part. That's how all of them. There's only a few stand up in there, like 50 Cent stand up, because 50 Cent was famous first. He was famous first. Now he's in Hollywood. He already has his power. Right? So he don't have to do nothing. And if you really want to make it in Hollywood. So Gilbert Arenas said, as you just heard, he overheard Harvey Weinstein and Holly Berry saying, hey, she had like she don't know us now, but that ain't what she was doing in the, in, 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 in the office. So she was getting clapped up according to them. So this is why I always try to tell brothers and sisters, you know, a lot of times we like to, you know, okay, well, we're over here in the white establishment. So, you know, we live in a better community. We got our, we, we, we working for working for them. No, it's better to work for your goddamn self. It's better to have shit popping yourself. You see? And when you got your own stuff popping, you can make the rules. Whenever you in somebody else's house, you know, like if we, if we as a community look at Nollywood. I ain't never heard it like that in Nollywood going on. I'm pretty sure something goes on in, in the entertainment industry because it always is. But when you got your own stuff, you're not worried about that. And we got enough opportunity in our own community. Might not be Hollywood big money, but it's something. And this is what these guys are saying. These guys are saying the same thing many times over. They're not deviating from the message. They're all saying it. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Shadu Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Jump. I really appreciate you for all that you discovered the bell. We're out.